20 years ago, leading dissident Peter Pithart was disgraced, forced to work as a road sweeper. Today, he's the man who's just drawn up the list of demands that may yet form Czechoslovakia's new constitution. He can hardly believe the transformation in his country. The atmosphere is so relaxed. People are so decent to one another. It's a, it's a miracle. Pithart's story is Czechoslovakia's story. In 1968, he was studying at Oxford University when Russian tanks invaded his country. He returned home, but his reformist politics cost him his job as a law lecturer. He was given manual work, tending parkland, clearing leaves, sweeping roads, working long hours in all weather alongside other dissidents and mental patients. Today, Pitt Hart, now a senior member of the Civic Forum movement, went back to the park to discover some old friends still working there. This man, formerly a train driver, also lost his job during the communist purges. So not only intellectual and I were forced to leave the job, but people like him too. Pitt Hart lived and studied in an old caravan during his years in disgrace. He says it was a lonely existence, but it inspired him to write. You, it might be uh, surprising for you, but there is this important similarity. Uh, um, between this uh, caravan and Oxford Library, you know, atmosphere of absolute uh, silence, you know. But we were terribly lost, terribly lost and isolated from all normal life, normal people here. But we were, the, 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 the atmosphere for study was perfect. Pitt Hart wrote a book criticizing the government. Miniature versions were printed so small they could be smuggled past the authorities. There is a uh, magnifier hidden in the spine of the book. And with the help of this magnifier, my book uh, could be read, not easily, but... <laughs> the, maj the major fear was that the uh, result of our hard work will be destroyed at one moment. A lot of manuscripts of my friends and my colleagues were, were completely destroyed without any chance to, I, I'm not absolutely sure now, without any chance to, 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 get it back, to get it back. During the years of repression, Peter Pithart, like thousands of other dissidents, faced persecution and harassment. He was once arrested by the secret police and accused of being an American spy. Today, as a leading member of the reform movement, he went back to the law faculty which threw him out 20 years ago. Despite the pro-reform banners, he couldn't bring himself to enter the building to face his former friends. It's not easy to explain. Uh, there, are, there, is a, there are some friends of mine and colleagues of mine. We were in very good relation. And most of them felt uh, the necessity to interrupt all connection with me and I would like to, uh, to avoid their embarrassment because it would cause my embarrassment and the situation of these two embarrassment at one moment it's too much for me. <laughs> Instead he returned to his new life at the headquarters of Civic Forum, past the young activists, down into the underground chambers beneath the Magic Lantern Theatre where only the privileged few are allowed. We were taken where television cameras have never been before, into the inner sanctum of the movement, now setting the political agenda in Czechoslovakia. Crisis committee here. There's a crisis committee here. These men, Civic Forum's inner circle, must react to each new development. They are not politicians, some are actors and musicians. They are astonishingly honest about the problems of controlling the dramatic process that they have started. Fantastic and almost incredible responsibility. We are not sure we are able to, to, just to be here. Peter Pithart took his place at the table. He says his dilemma now is should he stay and play an active role in the new government or achieve his dream of returning to Oxford University to complete studies rudely interrupted 21 years ago. Paul Davis, News at 10, Prague.